long time. Despite everything that's in the public domain, I think people still respond with ridicule when they hear stories of ET contact. And that's no accident. For decades, departments of defense around the world had officers whose job was to collate UFO sightings, to collate reports of close encounters and mass sightings, and classify all the cases that couldn't be explained away, and publicize all the ones that could be explained away. And so it was really a public policy to encourage the public to regard ET contact as a joke, so that anyone stepping up and saying, yes, but this is for real, will be treated with ridicule. And I think when that's gone on for decades, that level of gaslighting has a profound effect on our culture. I mean, I know I'm taking my life in my hands every time I step up and talk earnestly and sincerely about ET contact. I know that the cultural bias is to ridicule. And sometimes it's worse than that. I begin most of my days with correspondence. And every morning I have messages like this in my inbox. It's going to be a bloodbath when Jesus returns. You have no idea what's coming. You'll have to forgive my intense disdain for your views because what you are saying is heretical and blasphemous. You are clearly a Freemason, a Bolshevik, and a Psyop, and it is obvious to me that you are under satanic bondage. You are leading people away from the truth to Satan and are going to have a long, long time to repent. But it will be too late. Good luck to you. People can get very aggressive when their worldview is threatened. I do my best to show my mass, to explain why I hold the view that I do, why I believe that in the Bible there are narratives of ET contact hidden in plain sight. But the problem for a lot of believers around the world is that they have been taught that the whole of reality has to fit into a small number of boxes. And I'm talking about myself when I say this, because earlier in my life, when I was in the uh, full flight of evangelical ministry, I thought of the world in exactly the same way. Everything was either God, the devil, angels, demons, human, animal, vegetable, mineral, or it didn't exist. If you couldn't fit the thing into one of those boxes, then it didn't exist and you shouldn't talk about it. But I had some experiences early in my life that I realized did not fit into any of those boxes. And the more I've been involved in coaching individuals who are contactees and experiencers, the more I've been involved in workshopping with people who had that kind of experience, the more I've realized we live in a very interesting cosmos, in a soup of company, and that those boxes are not sufficient. Monsignor Corrado Balducci was very clear, a close encounter is not a human psychotic experience. It's not a demonic experience. It's not from the devil. And why, the moment you acknowledge the possibility of a populated universe, should all the other populations be regarded as demonic? That doesn't come from any biblical theology. It's pure fear that has been inculcated into people of faith through hundreds of years. And that suppression began before the days of Christianity. In my book, The Eden Conspiracy, I show that in the 6th century BCE, that suppression was beginning within the rewriting of the Bible that was to become the foundation for Judaism and Christianity. Yet you go into the deep past, go into the root meanings of the key words of those texts, listen to indigenous story around the world, and the narrative of paleo contact in my opinion, becomes unavoidable. Another human response to close encounters and mass sightings is that of trauma, which leads to an inability to speak about or even remember the experiences which occurred. In my coaching work, I've come across groups of people who have experienced a close encounter together. Let's say it's four people who are number 15 years old they were confronted by a craft and a being. 30 years later, two of them will still talk to each other from time to time to relive that memory and reassure each other that they have remembered correctly. 
and the other two not only won't speak about it, they will become very angry whenever the topic is broached. They don't want to talk about it, they don't want to think about it. And it's because it was so frightening, so disturbing, so challenging the general worldview, a feeling that if they really processed what happened, their ability to live an ordinary life doing ordinary things would be seriously impaired. And that fear response is very real and is one of the reasons why in my books I try and encourage people to share their experiences and to give one another permission to share stories that they can't explain, that they can't understand, or experiences where they only remember a fragment of what happened, which is often the trauma response. I find that when we do give each other permission to share our stories, even more stories emerge. And just to illustrate that, I'll tell you about a friend of mine, I'll call him Tom, a theologian in Australia, very well-respected theologian. And he was talking to his dad about my work, and his dad knows me. So his dad said, oh yes, what, what is Paul doing these days? And so Tom talked about my work in Paleo Contact, and his dad listened in silence. And then after a moment, his dad got up, left the room, and came back with a box. And he opened the box, and he took out pencil drawings and said, Tom, these are the drawings your grandfather made when Kraft visited his farm back in the 1950s and a story of a sequence of close encounters followed. Now my friend Tom had never heard that story before, not from his dad, not from his granddad. It had been totally silent within the life of that family until permission was given to broach the subject. And I find there is a great silence covering grassroots experience of UFO contact, UFO sightings, because parents want to protect their children, because people within a family don't want to be regarded as the lunatic. We have to move beyond that. And I think it's very helpful, all that is now in the public domain because of the July 26 hearing, it ought to give people permission to say, well, I've seen this, I've experienced this, and permission to people who are readers of ancient texts and say, well, I've interpreted it this way. I think contact was happening in the past. And that's the conversation I love to be a part of.